UTPA Women's Basketball caps off its record-breaking season in the Women's Basketball Invitational. UTPA Baseball is happy to have its starting catcher back this season. And do you remember how old you were when you got engaged? I was 26. But as I always say, when you know, you know. And two UTPA track and field athletes? Oh, they know. This is Brown Country. Hey everyone and welcome to Bronc Country, I'm Jonah Goldberg. Last week we told you about how the University of Texas Pan American women's basketball team clinched a spot in the postseason tournament for the first time in program history. When Thursday came around, the Bronx were in Lafayette, Louisiana for the start of the women's basketball Invitational. Cajun Dome booked, so the game taking place in Louisiana's volleyball facility and Brittany Bush had a huge game one of the top shot blockers in program history, and she showed everyone in the gym why. Bush was credited with four blocks. That was far from it for Bush. Check this out. Grabs the rebound from this Jalen Gordon miss, and that leads to Louisiana's favorite daughter, Raquel Preston, knocking down the layup. Bronx up 2-0. Now it's 2-2 when Bush takes it herself. Plenty more from her coming up. But first, we're back to Preston. Grew up about two hours from Lafayette. Rugs up 6-4. Next time down the court, time for a little more Bush. 11-8 Bronx. Two minutes later, Bronx down one. But Bush, having none of that. Bronx up 13-12. Now the game's tied at 14 when we go from the senior to the freshman. Stephanie Onyeje, Bronx by three. Six minutes left in the half. Bronx down two. So we're back to Bush. Tie game. And then, with the Bronx up one, Chazé is right on target. First time in the game anybody's been up two possessions, Bronx by four. Just over a minute left in the half, Teandre and Olin. Good in the foul. The Bronx take their largest lead of the night. It's 27-21. On to the second half. Game tied at 29. Not anymore. Nolan knocks down the layup. And then it's Sean Takeoff from downtown. Bronx by five. The Bronx went up by five a few more times at 36-31 on this Preston jumper, 38-33 on this Goff jumper, and 40-35 on this Karchin Thotter layup. The Raging Cajuns explode over the final 13 minutes to beat the Bronx 78-56. Bush posted her fifth double-double of the season, the 11th of her career. Wright was solid off the bench with eight points and six rebounds in her final game. Walker at seven, while Nolan scored five with four assists and three rebounds. We went into a very hostile environment at uh, Louisiana Lafayette. Kudos to Gary Broadhead and his team uh, over a very hard fought victory. I think for uh, 31 of the 40 minutes we led and then they had a run at the end. Uh, and, and you gotta give a lot of credit, not only their team, but boy, their crowd was unbelievable and got them in a, in a groove that was uh, that was one of the best I've seen all year. They have a very good team. They finished third in the Sun Belt. And again, credits to them. Um, Brittany Bush led us with uh, a double-double. She had 12 points, 11 rebounds. Again, we came up a little bit short on shooting the ball we need to, the way that we need to. And then uh, ULL got hot at the end, and that was a difference in the ball game. But we'll move on, we'll learn from it, and uh, we'll keep moving forward and uh, making this program something that not only UTPA, but the whole Valley will be uh, proud of. Despite the loss, still the best season in program history, the Bronx broke 33 different program records and tied 18 more. The Bronx posted their first winning season in 30 years at the NCAA Division I level, played in a conference tournament championship game for the first time, and played in a postseason tournament for the first time. Among the biggest records broken were wins, conference wins, conference tournament wins, neutral site wins, home wins, conference road wins, wins in a two-year span, and games played. 
Breaking all the records means that we're having success. I mean, you know, like one of the records, we played 34 games. You know, the most I've ever played was probably 30. And that means that we're having success. We're doing things proper. Uh, we've done things like the most wins, the most conference wins, the most conference tournament wins, neutral site wins, home wins. I mean, those are all good because everybody loves a winner. I mean, you can shake it and you can bake it, you can slice it and dice it. When it gets down to the end, people love winning. And people like to associate their stuff with their sales with winners. And uh, what we accomplished this year, getting to the WAC Tournament Championship Finals, our fans were loud, our band was unbelievable, our spirit squad, unbelievable, our cheerleaders, unbelievable. I mean, we're, we're so fortunate to do all the things we do, and that's because we have support of our administration. It wasn't just program records falling, but several individuals etching their names in the record books as well. Let's start with Brittany Bush. She may have only played two seasons with the Bronx, but she ranks fourth in program history in blocks and seventh in rebounds. She also broke the program records in both categories among players to spend just two seasons with the Bronx. Bush's final season, fourth most blocks and fifth most rebounds in a season. She just positioned herself well. She's a good athlete. She can jump. Uh, she finished a lot of shots and, and uh, it, this continues to get better and we're knocking on wood. We're hoping that she can extend her playing career overseas because we've had some people already inquiring about her. And, uh, but she just, she had a good mindset. Speaking of seniors, how about to Andrea Nolan? She was among the best in the NCAA and the WAC in assist to turnover ratio. Ranks 10th in program history in assists after dishing out 131 this season, the third highest total in program history. Also played a ton of minutes fifth most in a season in program history. T, T, T. Nolan in the top 25 in the nation in assist turnover ratio, and that means that she's taking care of the ball. That means that she is doing things that a lot of people can't do. And uh, she was exceptional, and we do appreciate the fact that she came out of a great program at Cali County Junior College, as did Bush, as did Tanisha Walker, and that's Todd Clark, Todd Q. Clark, the head coach at Cali County just did an outstanding job getting them ready to play Division One basketball. From seniors to a sophomore, look at all the records Shante Goff is involved in. Seven career record lists and six single season record lists. Some incredible numbers already, and she still has two years to go. I just think right now she just sort of scratched the surface on what she can do. Uh, we don't even want to double what she's already done. We want to try to triple what she's already done. And I think we can do that if that's what she wants to do. Like we say, the ball's in her court. UTPA baseball ran through a whole bunch of different catchers last year. This year, though, they've had a little more consistency. Coming up on Bronx Country, we show you how the return of Jacob Huckabee is making a big difference. We will work our minds, raise our hands, and search for the answers. We will study the stars, learn to speak each other's languages, and hear each other's songs. We will make each tomorrow brighter, more prosperous, and completely new. We cannot predict the future, but we can and will build it. We will come together. The University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. New opportunities for the 21st century. The University of Texas Pan American baseball team used four different starting catchers last season. Only three other teams could say that. In fact, the Bronx were the only team in the nation to have four different catchers start at least seven games each. A big reason for that? Injuries. Starting with the starting catcher, Jacob Huckabee. Huck is back now, though, and he's caught almost every inning, stabilizing both the catching position and the pitching staff. Mark Lopez has more. It really affected the team uh, in a big way. Um, you know, Huck not only was our starting catcher, 
but he brings a lot of energy uh, to the team. Around this time one year ago, Jacob Huckabee learned that his greatest opponent wouldn't be coming from the other dugout, but from an accident that no one saw coming. Um, their batter uh, bunted it right back at our pitcher, and um, when he bunted it back at our pitcher, our pitcher flipped it, and in my attempt to block the plate, um, I blocked it, and my knee ended up getting tangled up under him and uh, ended up just kind of didn't go my way. It was an accident that not only affected Jacob, but the entire team as well. You lose your catcher, and that's the second most important position on the field after the pitcher. But we not only lost our starting catcher in Huck, but we also lost a, a great uh, teammate and a great leader. The road back to the diamond wouldn't be without its challenges. Certain days were, they were longer than others, some more painful days than others, but uh, I, knew, I knew that uh, I would be getting back onto the field at some point. And it couldn't be done without support. Coach Mantrana and Coach Lopez really, really stayed behind me on it. Um, it was one of those things that it really, when it happened, it, it hurt me, uh, hurt me mentally. Um, and they, they stood behind me throughout the whole process, uh, telling me, you know, it's going to be okay. And his return. It was like playing baseball for the first time all over again. Couldn't have felt better. For Bronx Country, this is Mark Lopez. The Bronx played their last six on the road, starting with two games at top-ranked TCU. It was a one nothing game in the seventh inning stretch, but the Horned Frogs got two in the seventh and two in the eighth to put it away. Still, a strong pitching performance by Parker Gallegos, not to mention two more hits for Logan Landon. A little bit of a different story in game two, as TCU put up a four spot in the first en route to an 11-5 win. All of the Bronx runs came via the long ball, Landon with a two-run homer in the third, and Lee Rios with a three-run bomb in the ninth. The Bronx opened up whack play with a three-game series at Sacramento State, and the Bronx dropped the first game 4-2. Lake English pitched well, pitching his second straight complete game of the season, and Interestingly enough, his second in a row against the Hornets. Scott Mercer scored both runs, as Cole Ankar and Isaac Gonzalez had both RBI for the Bronx. The Bronx got another strong start in game two, holding a 3-1 lead entering the bottom of the seventh before falling 7-4. Justin Canonez only allowed one run through the first six innings. Landon with another homer, while Ankar hit his first, a two-run shot. The Bronx had a 1-0 lead after half inning in Game 3. The Hornets put up a 5 spot in the bottom of the inning and scored 5 more runs over the final 3 innings to beat the Bronx 10-2. Ryan Jackson bounced back from a rocky start, put up 4 straight zeros before allowing an unearned run in his final frame. Corey Davis with 3 hits, one of 4 Bronx with multi-hit games as the Bronx outhit the Hornets 12-9. The Bronx rebounded with a non-conference win over Pacific on Monday. So here's a look at the WAC standings. The Bronx will look to make up some ground in the standings this weekend when they host Seattle. Friday at 7, Saturday at 6, and Sunday at noon at Edinburgh Baseball Stadium. Competition among teammates can be fun, and it can be fierce, as they try to push each other to do better. But what do you suppose it's like when two student athletes competing in the same event are engaged? That and more coming up next on Bronx Country. Every time you look at the track and field results, Javier Cartero and Cristina Santiago Bravo are at the top of the hammer throw. They're also at the top of each other's hearts. Anais Cortez has the story. UTPA students, track stars. There we go. Teammates and soon to be married. We're not here alone. We, we got each other. Uh, when we start like together, I think it was like not perfect, like it was, it was good, you know, we yeah. got each other, so we support each other to continue to, I don't know. And in Spain we live like three, three hours ago, so sometimes I go to his house, he comes to my house, so when I know his parents, you know my parents, and it's like, I don't know, it's a good relationship. <laughs> Surrounded by teammates, these two are not alone. They have a strong bond a bond that began six years ago at a training camp with the Spanish Federation in Spain. And they have been inseparable ever since. We support each other. Yeah. We are always watching each other compete. So I don't know. Yeah. I think for us it's good. I think it, it helps a lot. Like yeah. Actually in Spain, I, I coach her. 
So like that's good because we we got problems. Like we got each other here. When we came yeah. here, it wasn't easy. You know, we changed a lot like, from Spain to here. So we support each other. I see. I think that's good. Yeah. Family is important. In fact, for many people, it's a support system. Even though an ocean separates these two from most of their family, they find support in each other. I used to be so much time with my family, so come here is will be too hard for me without him. Yeah, he pushed me a lot. As the practices move forward and the student athletes continue to learn, Bravo and Carretero are truly the most engaged student athletes. Reporting for Bronx Country, I am Anais Cortez. Bravo and Cartero with three of the Bronx Seven victories at the Cactus Cup in Kingsville over the weekend. Both had wins in the hammer throw, while Bravo added a victory in the javelin throw. Isaac Samuels won the discus throw to round out the throwers. On the jumping side, Milkawan Williams won the long jump, while Javier Garza took gold in the triple jump. And then, on the track, Savannah Antley picked up a win in the 5,000 meter run. Well, it was a good second meet for us. You know, the first meet, you're just kind of getting used to being back on the outdoor track and getting um, a lot of people a chance to compete. Uh, this meet was pretty much the same, getting opportunities for everyone to get out there and stretch their legs. We got to take a, a good portion of the team out to have their first meet and others to have their second. So it's a lot of solid performances. Um, again, across the board, the throwers had another uh, great showing uh, led by Christina in the women's side and Isaac and Trey both doing very well on the men's side. Uh, on the track, saw some good things as well. Travion Williams improving his time in the 400 and running very solidly in the 200. Um, and some of the ladies uh, doing the same. UTPA women's tennis with a trip to El Paso and Las Cruces for four matches. Started with a four-love non-conference win over Western New Mexico. Regan Greenwood and Katia Stavrilaki with a win at number one doubles, while Lison Le Biavant and Mariana Ranzauer took the win at number two. Zavarlaki, Greenwood, and Ranzauer won the singles matches in straight sets to complete the sweep. The next day, the Bronx opened whack play against Grand Canyon at New Mexico State, bowling 2-5. The teams of Lison Le Biavant and Mariana Ranzauer, as well as Christelle Amsalam and Dominique Esparza, helped the Bronx jump out to a 1-0 lead. But Greenwood was the only Bronx to take a singles match after winning a super tiebreaker. The Bronx rebounded for a 5-2 win over Seattle, almost a mirror image of the Grand Canyon match, as the Bronx got all of their points in singles, with wins coming from Katia Stavrilaki, Regan Greedwood, Christelle Amsalam, Mariana Ranzauer, and Natasha Mink. The Bronx finished up the trip with a 2-5 loss at UTEP. Katia Stavrilaki and Regan Greenwood had the lone doubles win. The Bronx got their points in singles at courts 5 and 6, but Mariana Ranzauer and Natasha Mink. After one weekend of WAC play, here's what the WAC women's tennis standings look like. The Bronx right in the thick of things at 1-1. One one. The next WAC cluster is set for April 3rd through the 5th at Grand Canyon. I think overall it's a good trip for us. Um, it was nice to get a conference win. Um, for, for some of them, I think Natasha, she played well. It's nice to see her sort of coming into her game a little bit more and um, trusting her, her shots a lot more. And then, you know, Katia put her back up at one and she played great. Um, it was one of her best matches, I think, of her semester so far. UTPA men's tennis also embarked on a tough road trip with four straight matches against ranked teams, the first three of which were against Division I teams. The Bronx started with an 0-4 loss to 31st ranked Oklahoma State. But it's interesting to look at those scores at four, five, and six singles. The Bronx won the first set on all three courts and we're leading the second set on two of those courts when play stopped. Next up, number 63 UT Arlington, another pretty strong showing for the Bronx despite a 2-4 loss. The Bronx won the doubles point thanks to wins by the teams of Kobe Jansen and Juan Cruz Soria, as well as Hector Ramirez and Nicolas Servaline. Ramirez also had a singles win, while Soria was in a third set when the match was stopped. Sunday, the Bronx had their toughest test of the season, visiting number eight Texas, and playing really well. Now the Bronx fell 2-5, but do you see the score at number one doubles? Not only did Juan Cruz Soria and Kobe Jansen beat the Longhorns top team, but they beat the 35th ranked team in the nation. The Bronx had some gutsy singles victories as well, as Hector Ramirez won a second set tie break to force a super tiebreaker before picking up the win at number two. And Elliot Johnstone bounced back from a first set loss to dominate the final two sets in a victory on court six. The Bronx were originally scheduled to play St. Edwards on Saturday, but due to rain, 
The match was moved to Sunday, just a few hours after the Bronx match at Texas. Not a problem though, as the Bronx dispatched of the number 22 team in Division II 7-0. Four of those singles wins came in straight sets, while the other two saw the Bronx win super tiebreakers. It was an awesome spring break trip, going for six days, four matches in six days, all against ranked teams. Uh, we finished off Sunday with a doubleheader up in Austin. It, was it wasn't scheduled to be a doubleheader, but just the way it went with, uh, unfortunately, with some rain up there on Friday and Saturday. So uh, played the Longhorns on Sunday, turned back around, played a ranked, uh, another ranked team up there. Uh, so it was a good challenge for the boys, mentally, emotionally, and physically, to go through it. It was a beautiful day. It was hot. Um, so it was a good way to end our trip together. Uh, to really push ourselves, uh, explore the pain cave and understand the beauty of the pain cave and how necessary it is. Uh, and they, they handled the situation really well, just responded to all the challenges and turned them into opportunities. And uh, we improved every single match that we played. So to finish it like we did on Sunday and to be able to come home together on, on a nice drive is, it is those things. Man. I mean, it's just, it, it makes us more than just the seven guys and the coaches. It makes us more than, more than the sum of our parts, so it's, it's awesome. Want to help prepare our student athletes for excellence in life? Then join the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All the proceeds go directly to student athlete scholarships, so visit BronxAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. One way you can donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund is by participating in our ninth annual Bay Fishing Tournament, better known as BAIT, on South Padre Island on April 11th. You could be one of three teams to win over $5,000 in cash prizes, including a $2,500 grand prize. You could also win a boat valued at more than $30,000 in the raffle. Visit utpabronx.com bait for more information. We will work our minds, raise our hands, and search for the answers. We will study the stars, learn to speak each other's languages, and hear each other's songs. We will make each tomorrow brighter, more prosperous and completely new. We cannot predict the future, but we can and will build it. We will come together. The University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. New opportunities for the 21st century. Here's what's coming up for the Bronx. Baseball with its first home wax series, welcoming Seattle to town over the weekend before hosting Incarnate Word on Tuesday. Men's tennis hosts the first WAC cluster with matches against Grand Canyon, New Mexico State, and Kansas City Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, as well as neutral site matches involving the other WAC teams. Women's tennis heads to Nichols State. Track and field is at the Texas Relays and the Bobcat Invitational. Women's golf heads to Houston Baptist and women's soccer is back on the pitch, visiting Texas A&M Corpus Christi for a friendly. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx Country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then, Go Bronx! our minds, raise our hands, and search for the answers. We will study the stars, learn to speak each other's languages, and hear each other's songs. We will make each tomorrow brighter, more prosperous, and completely new. 
We cannot predict the future, but we can and will build it. We will come together. The University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, new opportunities for the 21st century.